All right, reviewing the most missed quiz star questions. Number four out of chapter 17, uh, thermodynamics. When you look at it, the actual correct answer isn't there. Remember, when you go to calculate delta S, basically what you have to do is products minus reactants. So that's what you have here. You have products. So the product is FeOH2. If you look at the value, or FeOH3 is 107, the coefficient's 2. So I got the 107 there, the 2 there. Those are all my products. Then I take my reactants minus my reactants. So water is 70. So 3 times 70, I have that right there. Uh, three, and, 3 halves oxygen, or O2, is 205. So 3 halves times 205. And then last but not least, 27. The coefficient of Fe is 2. Put those together. For some reason, when they did the key on this problem, the correct answer isn't sitting there. Um, and the correct answer I would expect you to be able to kill, calculate in joules comes out to be negative 357.5 kilojoules. Excuse me, just uh, joules for Kelvin. So it's just products minus reactants. Um, unfortunately, the correct answer choice wasn't there. Next one. Uh, if you look at this one, they ask you about decrease in entropy. What they're asking you about is they're asking if you really understand the SLG rule. Remember, S. L, G. Going this way, we say the value for delta S is positive. If you go the other way, the value for delta S is negative. So if you look, the first one, gaseous reactants forming a liquid. So if you start here, you're starting here. Gaseous forms a liquid going that direction. That is going to be a decrease in entropy, so there's one of them. Precipitation, that's where something's aqueous and it goes back to being a solid. If you look, we said aqueous is the same thing as starting out as a liquid. Going back this way, forms a precipitate. So both A and B are decreases in entropy. Melting ice means you're going from a solid to a liquid. So therefore, you're going this way. So it can't be melting ice. That's an increase in entropy. Burning a piece of wood, that's where you have a solid. Eventually turns into... Uh, water vapor and carbon dioxide, so therefore that can't be the correct answer. And then E is actually the correct answer because it's these two. Since A and B are both decreases in entropy, that is considered the correct answer. Question number three, they ask you for a spontaneous exothermic process. As soon as they tell you it's spontaneous, you should know that that means delta G is negative because we learned that when we started talking about thermodynamics. Exothermic you should know that delta H is also negative. And they say which of the following must be true. Since they don't tell you a temperature, it can't be one where the signs are the same. So the only situation where delta H is negative and delta G is going to be negative is with when it is always spontaneous, delta S is positive. You have to basically approach it. If they, if they tell you spontaneous, you need to know that that tells you the sign for delta G. If they tell you non-spontaneous, it tells you the sign for delta G. Exothermic, you should know that delta H is negative. In this case, since they don't mention temperature, then you have to basically find the only situation where that would be the case would be always, and the correct answer is B. Next one. This is just asking you, is the process spontaneous? The best way to figure out if a process is spontaneous or not is to calculate delta G. The formula is going home to supper. So delta G is equal to delta H minus T times delta S. So going home to supper. So what you have to do is you take the H value, which is given you in the problem, 271 kilojoules. I put delta H there. They tell you the temperature is 300 Kelvin. So I put it in for T right there. Last thing I have to do is the S value. The S value, I must change to kilojoules, must. So I take 810, and using conversion to kilojoules, I convert it to 0 0.810. Pop that into going home to supper, and the value is positive 28 uh, kilojoules per mole. And since the value is positive, therefore, you know it is not spontaneous reaction. Next one. Uh, this is 16 off of the chapter 6, um, thermochemistry. They give you, a, a, this is basically just heat stoichiometry. They tell you you release 3.64 times 10 to the 4th kilojoules of heat. So that's my given. I drop my given into the grid. Why the negative sign? Because remember, when we release heat, it's going to be negative. So I put negative 64.6 uh, point. 
made 3.64 times 10 to the fourth kilojoules. Then I need a conversion factor. If I look here, if I notice the coefficient of Ca, C2, and the amount of heat, I'm able to get a conversion factor. Remember, we need to know when we looked and have done the heat equations and done these calculations that there's a mathematical relationship between that and the amount of heat. So what it comes out to be is one mole of Ca, C2, is equal to negative 128 kilojoules of heat. Thus, I pop it in as a conversion factor right there. The conversion factor then cancels using the fluffy bunny, kilojoules to kilojoules. I end up with moles of CaC2. The molar mass, when I calculate it, it comes out to be 64.1. Moles of CaC2 go on the bottom, grams go on the top, and then last but not least, they asked you kilograms. So you could either bounce it over or add the metric calculation on the side there, and you're good to go. Next one, Hess's Law. Hess's Law basically is asking you to, um, this is actually the same one we did in class. This was the one from the homework, problem 74. So if you look at the results from problem 74, it's the exact same problem that we did. You need to find the compass. One of them in this case does not have a compass, the second one. So you have to orient the other two reactions and then get it to cancel. So if you look, my first compass is NH2 or N2H4 as a liquid. You see it's on the same side. Therefore, I keep the value the same. I'm good to go. If I look at the bottom reaction, I have H2O2 as a liquid. I have H2O as a liquid there, but it's on the opposite side. So the first thing I have to do is flip it. If I look at the coefficient in the target, the coefficient has the uh, is 2. And in my normal reaction or my first reaction here, it has a coefficient of 1. So besides flipping it, I have to multiply by 2. So I change the sign to positive 187 and multiply by 2. The last thing I have to do is make sure it cancels. If you notice, um, oxygen, for example, O2 or H2 has to cancel. So at this point, you have H2 on the right-hand side, and it has a coefficient of 2. When you, I flip this, this reaction, that's all coded in green. So I have H2 on this side, 2H2. I know to get on the other side, I have to, to get it to cancel, I have to put on the other side uh, H2, 2H2s. So I take my final reaction, now I can get it, I know I don't have to flip it, because since I have the 2H2s from the third equation that I flipped over here and doubled, I have to just multiply this reaction by 2, the H2 there cancels, the 2H2 there cancels, and then basically all I have to do to this one is multiply it by 2, and according to Hess's law, states that if you add up all the delta H's for the three reactions, you get the value for the overall action, which is negative 818.2 kilojoules. If you look back when we went over the homework, it's problem 74. I just gave it to you again. Uh, number 10. Um, this is just asking you to calculate out, this is from chapter 17, this is asking you to calculate out um, the standard free energy change for burning one mole of solid glucose to carbon dioxide and water. Glucose is C6H12O6. Remember, whenever you burn, you have to write O2, carbon dioxide, and water. The biggest issue you guys probably had was you didn't realize that um, you have to balance the equation. It's not balanced. When you go and balance it, which I've taught already, um, when you go to balance the equation, you get 6 here, 6 there, and 6 there. And then from that point on, you just do products minus reactants, looking up the delta G values. So this one is products minus reactants again. You just look up the delta, delta G values. If you remember, delta G elements don't have a value. So you look up the value for CO2, look up the value for H2O, multiply by 6, you get your products minus the reactants, the value that you can look up for glucose, um, and you're good to go. Products minus reactants, that's just some simple calculations. All you do in that case is products minus reactants and look up the value. Biggest issue you guys have with that is actually balancing the equation. Next one, number six. They're asking you about the spontaneousness uh, of this reaction. So this is from chapter 17. If you look, when I first look at the equation, here's what I notice. I notice the equation's exothermic. So automatically I know the value for delta H. 
Then the next thing I look at is I notice I have to use to find delta S, I notice I have gases, gas, and a gas. So that means I have to use the mole rule. I can't use the SLG rule, the number of moles. If I take the two here and the one there, I get three total moles on the left-hand side. Two total moles on the right-hand side, so going from left to right, the number of moles decreases, therefore my entropy is decreasing. So I have a negative delta H value and a negative delta S value. When our both signs are the same, that means temperature comes into it. Remember, negative and a negative equals low temperature. So then B would be the correct answer. All right? Next one. Um, this is, again, same idea. If you look, the first thing they tell me, exothermic. As soon as I see exothermic, I write delta H is negative. Next thing I need to do is find delta S, gas, and a gas. I notice I have two moles on the left, two moles on the right. Number of moles is decreasing, therefore my delta S value is also negative. So when it's negative and a negative, it's kind of a repeat of the last one. Spontaneous at low temperatures, but not at high temperatures. Same thing, exact same idea you have to apply. Next one, which one should have the highest molar entropy at 25 degrees Celsius? The first thing I do, let me erase some of the stuff, is... The first thing I do is I eliminate anything that's not a gas because I'm looking for entropy, which means I am going to line out the solid, the liquid, and the liquid. So then basically I'm down to the same two substances that are both gases at the same temperature. This one contains five atoms. That one contains four. Remember, the more complex or the greater number of molecules, the greater the entropy, therefore your correct answer is E for number 11 on that's off 17. Next one, which of the following reactions is spontaneous at high temperatures but not at low temperatures? High temperatures, as soon as you see the term high temperature, the first thing that you should realize is that high temps mean two things. It means that you have a positive delta H, and it means that you have a positive delta S. So that's really what you're looking for. Then you go back and let's look. Positive H, positive S. Well, right away, I have a negative. Oops. Right away, I have a negative H and a negative H, which means I can automatically eliminate that and that. So the only correct answer is reaction B would be the only one. Therefore, C would be the correct choice. Why? If you look at it, first the requirement is it has a positive of the H. Second requirement is that S must be positive. I have two moles on this side, one mole, three moles, so it goes two to four since it's all gases. Therefore, I have a positive H, positive S, which when I see high temperatures, that's the first thing I have to look for. You have to be able to study that and know that. Next one. Um, same idea as the previous one, heat is a conversion factor, so they give me 2.79 moles of uh, carbon, I drop that, that's my given. If you look, the coefficient of carbon is 3, that's how much heat. So you come up with a conversion factor for every 3 moles of ca carbon, it equals uh, positive 464.8 kilojoules, a little bit of calculations, and you get your answer. Simple heat stoichiometry. Next one. 18, you got to be careful the way you read it. It says the decomposition of one mole of benzene. Benzene's right there. It's a little tricky. Decomposition of one mole of benzene. So they want to know what the enthalpy change would be. Well, in order to do that, you have to flip the reaction because the fact that it says decomp, I know it's tricky, the lingo they're using, but the fact that they say decomp means that it has to go be a re reactant, not a product. So I have to flip this over. When I flip this over, I change the sign, the value, and it says one mole. You have to pay attention to that. They'll ask you about the number of moles. In this case, the coefficient's already one, so you don't have to worry about modifying it. But that's where you could divide or multiply by a number sometimes on these tests. And then I know my correct value is B, 630 kilojoules.